Well, good morning to all of you in Homeland audience. We have a slow arriving congregation uh, and a lot of fellowship going on as we begin our morning worship. And the pastor has arrived. <laughs> good morning, Pastor Bob. <laughs> I was out, out uh, playing around here, huh? It's time to start. You're kidding, it is. What it's the spirit that moved you, that's all. What did I do in my bulletin? <laughs> you want this one? Hang on for a minute. What was I doing? I'm so excited. We've got some people have returned and all, so I'm just kind of, you know, walking around this morning. But um, ah, we start out with these, these words. The, the people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Do I hear amen? Hmm? Amen, amen. What has come into being is life, and the life was the light of the world. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I feel afraid, I think I've lost my way, but still you're there right beside of me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be with me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now I will not forget your love for me, and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus, be my guide, and hold me to your side, and I will love you to the end. a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. There, those of you that are watching in, we have a few more in church this week. The roads aren't quite as slippery as they have been, so it's, it's good to see a few more uh, in the sanctuary, and we're glad that you're watching in this morning or we'll watch later on uh, YouTube. And Shane, thank you. Thank you for uh, facilitating our um, virtual reality. <laughs> uh, one announcement is that we are going to continue our Tuesday morning, and, and you've heard about this book study we're doing, which is called Meeting Jesus for the First Time. Uh, the books have not come in yet. They're, gonna be, they're supposed to be on Wednesday, um, but we'll still meet this Tuesday, and I'm going to focus on the Trinity. Uh, Richard Rohr has been... Uh, over the last week, focusing on that and the, the devotions he's been sending out, and um, they've been really profound. I'd like to share uh, in that Tuesday morning, um, so I invite you to be there, 9.30. Uh, I don't think there's any other announcements to be made this morning, unless anybody else has anything for the cause at this point in the service. No. Well, let us rise and Join with Betsy in our call to worship, which comes from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. One thing I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says. Teach, Teach me your way, O oh Lord, and lead me on a level path. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hmm. Servant shine. So 
How can there be any darkness in me if you are the light of the world? You are the light of the world. Won't you join us in verses 2 and 3? You are the bread of life, O Lord, broken to set us free. So how could there be any hunger in me if you are the bread of life? You are the bread of life. You've overcome the world, O Lord, and given us victory. So how could I fear when trouble is near? You've overcome the world. You've overcome the world. Now just enter and listen in. You are the light of the world, O Lord, and you make your servant shine. So how could there be any darkness in In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. I find it pretty incredibly inspiring that pre-scientific, right, pre-enlightenment people, at least 3,000 years ago, as they thought about the blessings, as they saw, thought about the world that they were in, they perceived that it all started with light. Isn't that neat? Light coming out of the dark void. And what's really amazing is that it's even consistent with today's scientific hypothesis, right, of the, the way that the world began. We have just sent a new telescope one million miles out into space to seek after that first light. Hmm? The James Webb Telescope. I talked about it Christmas Eve. It did launch on Christmas Day, which I know was, they wanted to launch it on Christmas Eve for all the right reasons. It went up on Christmas Day and now had, it, and there's a picture in your bulletin, it has uh, deployed these tennis court size uh, heat shield, that's the bottom of it, um, and has unfolded that 21 foot diameter antenna. That's 21 feet in diameter. That's huge. Hmm? And over the next five months, the facets of that antenna are going to be aligned and calibrated to one ten thousandth the thickness of a human hair. Hmm? Because that's what's required in order to be able to look out 13.7 billion years out. Within 100 million years of the first light in the way that science has, you know, dated the universe. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And it was good. And we've come a long way in our understanding of light over the last 300 or 3,000 years. Nothing travels faster than light. Hmm? And it acts both like ripples in a pond and billiard balls on a table. Both. Pretty cool. Radiated energy. That's what light is, right? 
seen and unseen. We only see a small, very small part of the spectrum of light. Hmm? So today we're going to return to Christmas Eve and, and pick up again on this light. I'm, I'm really inspired to take a, a little bit deeper uh, step into Jesus as that light, as the new light of the world. You know, just take a breath. Pause in the wonder, the amazement of this light. And so this morning we begin with some of the prophetic words from Isaiah relating to the light. Let's see. Isaiah 59, 9, he says, Therefore, justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We wait for light, and lo, there is darkness, and for darkness, and for brightness, but we will walk in gloom. In the next chapter, he goes on, in Isaiah 60, 60 19, The sun shall no longer be your light, by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you by night. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. And so poetically, to those returning from exile who were exited to go back and rebuild community and the temple, in Isaiah 49, 5 to 6, Isaiah declared, and now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him? For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, and my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. And in conclusion, from Isaiah 60, verse 3, the prophetic word of God to the people proclaimed, Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Joy's concerns to share with one another this morning. Anybody have joy? Or can, I, I have to say, I, I want to start with a joy. You know, Kate and John are back. Good, great to see you back. And great that you had such a wonderful time out in Michigan with family. It must be uh, bittersweet, right? You're back here where it's wonderful, but you've left friends and family back there. So, oh, wow. But just wonderful to see you uh, back in Moultonboro. Wow. Uh, Bev. Uh, Bev. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, I know, sorry. <laughs> um, Ed and I would like to ask for your prayers for Ed's niece, Maria. Um, we prayed for her off and on for several years now. She has severe liver and kidney disease, and she's been unconscious for several days now. Yesterday, she did call her husband's name, but even though he was there, she didn't seem to know he was, so... If you would please, please keep her in prayer. She has custody of her 10-year-old grandson, and we're just so worried about the whole mess. Thank you. Let's take a minute just to enter into prayer, really connect with where Bev's heart is this morning and what she shared with us, and you know, really connect to that power of God's Spirit that does wonders. And lift Marie up in our prayers and her granddaughter, you said, Ben? Grandson. Grandson. Just to connect. That God would pour a healing touch.
bring others around in his love to share with her and her grandson. Oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayers. prayers. Mm. Jan. Uh, For my for my step's daughter, Eileen Smith, who shattered her ankle uh, Friday night, and she's in a Boston hospital waiting for surgery. Poor Arlene. I'm going to just add to that because I just heard this morning that Sue Scudder slipped and um, broke a rib, so she's in quite a bit of pain. I did not know that until just this morning. So, Sue, I'll bet you're watching this morning. We have you in our thoughts. And, you know, stay off the roof or wherever you are. You know, she's just amazing what she'll do. But, um, and, and it only hurts when you laugh, right, Sue? Yeah, or when you breathe, I'm sure. But you are in our thoughts and prayers. And, you know, maybe you'll call some of us to come over and help a little bit more from now on. But, yeah. Ken. I'd like to pray for my daughter, Katie, who mm-hmm. recently had a <clears throat> biopsy done of a lump in her breast. I hope that it's non-malignant and it can easily be removed and it won't require anything further. Well, let's take a moment to f- connect with Katie also. I, having been there, I know the anxiety of this moment. And I know the anxiety of a dad at this moment. So, Lord, just invade the situation and and just pray for a a clean path forward to strengthen and give us that peace. Amen. Mm. Good morning, Josh. Uh, Good morning. Uh, Prayers for Bill Broussard, who is uh, facing triple bypass surgery that they put off Four days so far, and uh, uh, he needs all the help he can get. You know, I I, I don't mean to be glib, but triple bypass says it's got to be about God because a tr- it's a triune kind of thing, right? A Trinity thing. <laughs> I, I my prayer is it'll be that way. You know, that it'll be a, a God instance. Yeah, yeah, for Bill. I have a joy and it's just an amazing thing. My my kids, my oldest son and daughter have my oldest grandson, but they just they had decided that they weren't going to have any more kids. They want to do God's work by fostering. My da- They have taken in a 13-year-old who is a student of my daughter-in-law's. My daughter teaches a freshman year high school English, and this young girl has gone through several foster homes, and she just happened to say to her, boy, I wish I could be in your house. And the school system just totally supported it. The social system totally supported it. And now she's been in their house for about a week, and her name's Maya. So I just pray that, you know, Maya and little Bobby, you know, just continue. I guess they're playing Mario or something together so far. But, you know, it's, it's, it has just, it's quite a, quite a wonderful thing. Yeah, so keep them in your thoughts and prayers, because uh, I know it's going to be a, a challenge, too, to, to make all that happen. But I'm quite happy in that. You know, I didn't work it in my sermon, so I do want to take a moment to um, stop and really think about Martin Luther King. You know, and this call for peace on earth, that we would be able to connect in all our diversity, that we would connect because we are all children of God. That's God's dream. That would mark the King's dream. May it be our, not only our dream today, but our purpose. That the universal Christ would really break through and connect all. Just take a moment in silence for Dr. King. Let us continue in a moment of silent prayer, lifting up these joys and concerns that have been shared this morning and those that are also on your hearts and minds.
one heart and one voice. Let us enter into the light and share together the prayer as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And let us not fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. of the presentation of our tithes and offerings. The world waits for a miracle. The heart longs for a little bit of hope. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. A child prays for peace on earth, and she's calling out from a sea of hurt. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Can you hear the angels singing? Glory to the light of the world. Glory to the light of the world is here. The drought breaks with the tears of a mother a baby's cry is the sound of love come down come down Emmanuel oh he is a song for the suffering he is Messiah the Prince of Peace has come he has come Waits for a miracle. 
the cold. The heart longs for a little bit of hope. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. chapter 8, verse 12, John says, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have light of life. Wow. And further on in John's gospel, Jesus continues, While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of the light. And according to Matthew, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus also preaches, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl, right? You you don't do that, do you? Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Wow. Wow. So we take a, a deep breath and we just maybe even look at the windows here and just see the light pouring through and the beautiful colors that they cast out into the room. Oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts truly shine like that light into this space this morning. And all God's people said, The world waits for a miracle. The heart longs for a little bit of hope. Oh, come. Oh, come. Emmanuel. A child prays for peace on earth. And she's calling out from a sea of hurt. Oh, come. Oh, come. Emmanuel. And I can hear the angels singing, glory to the light of the world. Glory. The light of the world is here. Ashley, thank you for playing that and singing that. It's beautiful. You really brought it to life. I was afraid that no one could replicate uh, Lauren Dangle, who who sings this, but wow, between um, Ashley and Murray, that was beautiful. Wow, you really brought glory to it. 
John tells us about this Emmanuel, right? He says, the sun no longer shines by, or the, the sun shall non, no longer be your light by day, as I am the light of the world. But we also have to connect, connect to that next line, and you are the light of the world, he proclaims. That web telescope going out into space to look way out and try to collect enough energy to see the very first light or within a, a million years of the 13.8 billion years you know since that big bang happened it, it's just amazing we can't begin to look that far you cannot see that star that light out there it's it's in that another spectrum even it's ultraviolet that's the heat uh, uh, part of the spectrum it's all light it's all uh, energy but it's not viewable with the human eye. But fortunately, there's a new light every day. And we have the opportunity to walk in that light, a new light for the present, for us right here. And as we look at the words of, that, of the prophet Isaiah, we recall that there was much darkness in his days, right? You enter in the context of what he was talking about. Nations were rising up against nations. People who were just trying to raise their families and find some sense of joy in the world were dying or being oppressed by the next powerful ruler or the next wealthy elite class that came in. The Lord was not the light of the world. It seems that that light had definitely escaped way out into the vast darkness of the universe. And yet on Christmas Eve, we heard the prophet proclaim this good news, right? The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them, light has shined. Wow. A new light, hope, promise, a new kingdom, right? Justice and righteousness from this time forward. Jesus was that light. Do we need it today? Has it vanished out into the darkness of the universe, at least in some areas, some places in our world today? I think in many ways it has. It feels in a lot of ways that that light has left, lost us today that we've lost the light, not that the light has lost us, but that we've lost that light, and that it is desperately needed. And I think, in the religious world anyway, that it's mostly because we haven't understood this as a new light that has come into the world, an all new light. And so what I'm gonna try to do today is I'm gonna try to illustrate this by using an analogy I am going to contrast, I wish I could find a clear one, the incandescent light bulb and the new light, right? The new LED. Okay. What shall I say that the kingdom of Jesus is like? It's like an LED. Hmm. Now surely it hasn't been that long. You all remember the incandescent light bulb, right? And I bet you can remember trying to change one of these when it first burns out, right? Remember burning your fingers when you took that out? Sure. Again, I wish I had a clear one, but most of you probably looked inside. Inside here, there's a very fine wire, and it's coiled, right? And the wire is made of tungsten. And inside the bulb, this is either a vacuum or there's an inert gas in here, okay? So when you turn on the, a light bulb, and they don't break, that's really good. That's another one I didn't think of. It's important in the analogy here. Thank you, God, thank you for, you know. There's always a revelation that can happen, yeah. All right, so, when you turn on, I guess I'm gonna talk about the incandescent first. Yeah, let me bring this over, it'll help me. I'll, I'll just stand over here. Can we, or I'll move back over here so you can. Shane doesn't have to realign the camera. Ah, we're having fun this morning, aren't we? <laughs> Yeah. All right, so when you, turn on, when you turn on one of these old bulbs, 
Boy, stay with me. <laughs> what happens is there's, there's these charged electrons, okay, and they're moving around. And when you turn the bulb on, they get pushed really hard up into this coil. But the coil is highly resistive, so it's pushing back on it, okay? So they're forcing each other together, and eventually what happens is the wire starts to glow, okay? The glowing is actually electrons that are being pushed so hard and being brought to such a high energy state that they're just flung off, okay? And it's packets of energy, and packets of energy ha can be seen as light. That's what light is. It's these packages of energy. But it's mostly, in this bulb, put out as heat. That's why you burn your fingers. Only a little bit of it becomes light. And don't ever touch the tungsten in here. I think it's like 3,000 degrees Kelvin. It's, it's really hot. It'll burn right through your finger. Um, because of this, these old incandescent, incandescent bulbs didn't last very long, did they? And the wire is really fragile and very breakable. If this got hot and you dropped it, like I did, it, it would break. The tungsten wire would break in there, wouldn't it? Um, and if the seal at the bottom of this breaks and, and oxygen, air gets in there, then the tungsten will oxidize and it'll just crumble. Okay? So really important, very fragile and all. So the result of turning on one of these old bulbs is definitely light, but it's relatively short-lived very inefficient. Only about 10% of the current that goes into this becomes light. 90% of it becomes just simply heat. Hard pushing, resistance. Eventually a glow, but highly inefficient. Very little light for a, a lot of effort put in. Particles just being flung off and fragile, short-lived. Jesus was, is, a new light, the highly needed new light. So we say Jesus is about a new covenant, right? A new relationship, us with God and therefore with each other in this new light. As you're well aware, many of the traditions um, of the old, co the old covenant, the Old Testament, were about rules and laws, right? Hmm? Musts and must nots, that's what it's about. Largely about reward or punishment. The fearful, the, the, the faithful feared the wrath, the hard push of the current of God, right? So at least some worked equally as hard, pushing also, to check off the boxes and please the Almighty God, right? Force against force. But like the tungsten bulb, if you read your scripture, it was fragile, right? As are all relationships that are primarily based on privilege or punishment. And by all accounts from the stories throughout the Old Testament, like the incandescent light bulb, it was usually not very efficient. Most often the outcome was heat, right? Divisions, wars, oppression, suffering. We read a lot about that, don't we? The old light, the old way of relationship with God and life was like an incandescent light bulb. Very forceful, not very efficient. Creating a whole lot of excess heat, fragile, and definitely not resulting in that light that originally created it all. Even Jesus says, said in his day, you wash the outside of the glass, but you leave the inside filthy. Hmm? You honor me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. The light has been flung off out into the darkness of the universe. You heard the prophet tell the elites who were returning from Babylon, what, and their goal was to rebuild the temple and temple worship in the way they had done before, and yet the prophet says, it is too light a thing that you should simply be my servants to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel, I give you as a light unto the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth, not simply here in Jerusalem, not simply in the temple, not simply in this way of worship. Hmm? 
there was a need for more light, a new light. And I think there is still today. And fortunately, we have a new light today. And, you know, it's, it's this direct replacement, right? Direct replacement, LED, light-emitting diode. And it works entirely differently than an incandescent bulb. A new covenant in a new light. Okay, so if, if this gets too deep, just throw the, the you were given cabbages and, and, and stuff, so you can just throw those if I go too far, but I gotta give you a little bit of, of an understanding of how these things work. So a light emitting, a diode is made up of semiconductor material, okay? It's not fully conductive, it's kind of semi-conductive. And actually what it is, is it's a sandwich of two different types of semiconductor material sandwiched together, okay? And the LED is a modified diode, right? So one slice of the sandwich is a material that has free electrons, okay? So these electrons are in this material here, and they, they bounce around, They're, they get a lot of energy, okay? And the other material is different. It has holes, okay? It has holes. And electrons want to find holes, because you can find rest in the hole. And so when you turn on the electricity, the electric, and it's much lower current, it gently inspires the electrons to branch over this gap between the two materials and drop into the holes. Okay? Pretty cool. Um, now, these free electrons have a whole lot of energy. I mean, they got a lot of energy. And the holes are very low state, so when they drop in, guess what? Energy has to be given off freely given off. That energy is light. That's why a diode gives off energy. The packets of light come from this incredibly active electrons coming over to these negative holes, opposites attracting freely with just a gentle push, and when they do, the, th the energy isn't flung off, it's freely given off. That's light. It's going to be one of those days. <laughs> right? Do you see the difference between the LED and the incandescent? No hard pushing with the LED. The current is tailored to be gentle so as not to burn out the device. Much less heat is created, much more efficient, much more light and all by this mutual coming together to be at rest. Pretty cool? So the point for us today is that with the LED, light results constructively through constructive combining by electrons and holes, positives and negatives, opposites coming together, no flinging out no anger, if you will, because that's what the heat's like, right? None of that. Excess energy is just freely released as we decide to follow Jesus, the Christ. Hmm? Surrendering our differences and finding rest, finding peace, ways to enjoy life together that last. The energy released in this covenant, this way of relationship, is a cool light that can be seen by others and witnessed. Witness as a desired way. How many of you haven't been putting these in your houses yet? Hmm? You saw the benefit, didn't you? You saw the difference. In your electric bill, but also, if it burns out, you, it's not hot. It's warm. Some of it does go in. These are about 40 to 50% efficient, whereas an incandescent was about 10. But others witness it. Others see the true God, the new light, and they're going to want to drop in the holes also. Do you get it? You see? Hmm? What shall we say the kingdom of Jesus is like? It's like a light emitting diode. Not forceful, not fragile warm, but lasting, 
attracting, gentle, peace-filled. Lauren Dangle's song ends, For all who wait, for all who hunger, for all who've prayed, for all who wonder, behold your king, behold Messiah, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Glory to the light of the world. Glory to the light of the world. Glory to the light of the world is here. Jesus is the incarnation of the soft, efficient, attracting light that the world needs today. The current that makes the light is the gentle Holy Spirit. We are the electrons and holes. Right? Hmm. May we know this God, this new light. May we let go of the energy that divides and come together to produce this bright, white, long-lasting light. The light that creates the world. Amen? Mm. Mm. I have to say, I hope you feel how I this is how Einstein felt. He says that. He says it's like coming to know the Almighty when he starts to understand more about light. And and all of his work is really the basis of how we came to have these semiconductors. So science does get it too. Mm-hmm. We all should. It's all one God. It really is all one light. Thanks be to you, O Lord. Amen? You want to come up, Rich? new beard. Um, um, I invited SPRC members up here behind me because I wanted to talk to you about a meeting we had this week. Um, We have a new pastor. Uh, And before we get into the details, let me just go through a list of thank yous. Um, I was told that we get uh, a pastor early in the process because they're the best. The ones that go first are the ones that go, uh, the ones that are the best go first. Uh, we have the first appointment in the Granite District. We may have, uh, because Taesung was the district superintendent was not sure, we may have the first appointment in the whole conference. It's either the first or the second in the, in the entire conference, in the New England Conference. Uh, and we are, we're there because of the work that so many of you did. So I want to thank the congregation um, because you participated by, by survey, by small group meetings. I want to thank the ad hoc committee that Kate Wilder ran. Uh, they, they ran those committees. They spent lots of time writing and rewriting documentation. I want to thank the SPRC committee behind me, uh, which also included Terry Mastro and Kate Lankar, who are not here today, um, for all the work they did. We met twice a month starting in August through October. Uh, wrote and rewrote documents uh, with the stuff we got from you guys and from Kate's committee. And I want to thank the church council who looked at everything and approved it. In some cases, they asked us to go back and redo some things. Um, The district superintendent and the um, bishop, uh, I I was told, were truly impressed by the amount of time and effort in in the finished document that was sent in as a part of the church profile. So we got what we got, uh, and we are delighted, by the way, with the person we've got uh, coming to us uh, because of all the work everybody in this church did. Um, It truly is, the the meeting we had with the individual uh, was really good. We're impressed. Uh, I have to read something. This is the bureaucracy. And it does help to get your phone right side up. Um, 
Bishop Devadar intends to appoint the Reverend Tim Wilcox as pastor of the Moultonboro United Methodist Church, effective July 1, 2022, is subject to fulfilling all the requirements needed for a successful transition by the pastor and the respective churches affected by the appointment. Um, that's, that's the official documentation. And, and I'm told that we have a picture of the new pastor, so if you want to put it up, go ahead. Uh, his name is Tim Wilcox, Pastor Tim. He, uh, just a little background of information for you. Um, he grew up, he was born in Wisconsin, grew up in Iowa, uh, and made comment to us that he grew up on a farm, and I learned something this week when we met with him, because he said only 10% of the people in Iowa are farmers, which I thought was amazing, because I thought everybody in Iowa was a farmer. <laughs> Um, he is currently at a Methodist church in, <coughs> excuse me, uh, in Maine. He started out uh, in Great Britain after, after school. He went to college at U Iowa State University and then went to seminary in Illinois. He was a year posted in Great Britain, and then he chose to come to New England, he and his wife. So he's been in Maine and Vermont uh, ever since. His last seven years have been in uh, Caribou, Caribou, Maine. Uh, I assume he's coming here, by the way, for the warm weather. Um, um, so, he, so he's been the whole time, uh, other than Great Britain, in, in New England. He has three children. He's married, has three children. His oldest son is a uh, junior at Bates College in Maine. His second child, who is a boy, uh, is in his senior year at high school, and he has a daughter who is a freshman in high school. They, obviously, they will be coming. Um, he was here this week uh, to meet with us. He also went through the, uh, the uh, parsonage, and they will be moving to the parsonage uh, in sometime before, before July 1. Uh, he says his strengths are leading worship, spiritual growth of the congregation, and he says he loves to teach, particularly around the Bible. Uh, and so that, to me, is a phenomenal fit with what we said we were looking for. Uh, so I think we should all be happy. We have a new pastor coming. I would say th this group will be meeting with anybody who wants to talk about what we heard after church downstairs. Uh, we have a great, great opportunity going forward. Um, so we will provide more information as we go forward and as we get more information. And if you have any questions, please ask any, any of us. Uh, and again, thank you for all your help. I think you should also give thanks to uh, Rich for his leadership throughout the time. A lot of work. Yeah. And let us sing together. Let us rise and sing as we go forth. Shine, Jesus, shine. Shine, fill this land with the 
Downstairs and have a chance to uh, share. You can all share uh, downstairs. To ask uh, Rich and Staff Parish. Um, I have to leave. I have a, a meeting um, at, an, at another church. So go in Christ. Go in the light. The efficient, warm, but lasting, peace-filled. Share it with others. Go in Christ, and Christ will go in you. Amen. 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 